One of the most common questions we get out here at the dig site uh, is what, what do we do with these iron objects that we find. Uh, in this well in particular we've been finding a, a, an average of a couple dozen iron objects a day. Um, these range from you know gun parts, sword parts, uh, armor, tools, lock parts. Uh, and today, in today's uh, update, what we're going to do is we're going to show you what happens to iron once it's removed from the field. So an object like this right here, at this point it's unidentifiable, but you can see this object here is, there's a, there's a lot of rust. And that's one of the things we wrestle with is, you know, we can't necessarily identify an object in the field uh, because more often than not, there's so much rust has accumulated on these objects that they are no, long, no longer distinguishable. So what we'll do is we'll show you where the objects go from here. Hi, my name is Michael Lavin. I am senior conservator for the Jamestown Rediscovery Project and we are here in the lab which is uh, on premise of Jamestown Island. And in front of me I have here a uh, tray of artifacts that have come in from the field. And if you look closely, you can see that these haven't been washed yet. Uh, and the reason for that is we are on city water, and city water has chlorides in that. Chlorides in combination with oxygen in the air and water vapor on iron will cause rust. So one of the jobs of the conservator is not to uh, inflict any more damage to the artifacts. So we definitely don't want to introduce any more chlorides to an already uh, rusting artifact. I'm holding two artifacts here. The one in my right hand is a mason's trowel that has not been washed yet and a ball lock in my left hand. And um, we will wash the, uh, we wash these in uh, RO water, reverse osmosis, that has been uh, deionized. And after this, uh, that they've been washed, they go to our curator, senior curator, Bly Straub, and she'll assign each one of these artifacts a unique number, which will follow this throughout the entire conservation process. Uh, the very next um, step for these will be a digital x-ray. I'm holding the uh, ball lock that was washed earlier and it is returned from Bly with its unique number that stays with it during the entire conservation process. And now I'm getting ready to x-ray it. Um, we have done many of these uh, before and there are a few that are in the uh, museum. And what you'll see is that uh, there's a hasp. It's just like a padlock for your master lock for your uh, locker room door um, in school. But you'd have a uh, key and you'd have the inner workings including the spring and a sliding lock bar and your hasp which hinges and um, we'll see what we can see on the digital x-ray. And since this is just one small object, I'm going to put a couple of other items on this digital x-ray plate. And here's the mason's trowel. Uh, don't know what this is yet, but we'll find out. And this unique item which might be part of a buckler boss or a shield Digital x-ray allows us to get a sneak peek through the artifact, uh, helping with identification, conservation treatment methods, and um, what we want to uh, actually do with the artifact. So let's take a look at what we have. As you can see here on the screen, here's the mason's trowel. Um, and here's the ball lock. We can get a little bit better view on this. And some other weird uh, artifact, which I'm not exactly sure what it is yet, uh, but we'll, we'll talk to Bly Straub about that. And this appears to be a, uh, just a piece of strap. But with this x-ray, the areas that are in white 
are more dense and the areas that are black are less dense. And this would tell me that uh, none of these artifacts have enough uh, iron left in them to be completely stripped. So these would be um, aerobrated. Um, I don't see any maker's marks on the mason's trowel. Uh, doesn't appear to be a key stuck in the ball lock and I'm learning a little bit about the construction of this weird artifact. Uh, it's got a couple of uh, things that have been brazed onto it and I'm not sure uh, what's going on exactly but we'll, we'll figure that out shortly. After digital x-ray we uh, know which process the artifact is going to go through and that's air abrasion so we're going to use this very fine aluminum oxide powder and this air abrasion machine uh, which is like a mini sandblaster to blow away the rust. Another method that we employ here at Jamestown is electrolytic reduction uh, where we reverse the flow of electrons. The, uh, we have a sacrificial plate which is the anode and the uh, iron artifact which is the cathode and we're actually using that to pop off the rust at the surface of the metal um, and it's in a bath of 3% sodium carbonate. In this cabinet here we have uh, all iron artifacts uh, that are soaking. Uh, we're leaching the chlorides out of the artifacts. Uh, this process takes uh, in general about three to four months. Uh, after this they are uh, go through a series of steps to desiccate them and then we coat them with an acrylic. After all the chlorides have been leached out of the artifact in the bath, they need to be desiccated or dried out. And the final desiccation process is uh, in the vacuum chamber. And after they have been desiccated fully, they will be aerobrated for appearance and then coated with an acrylic. And then they're stable enough to go into uh, the museum or into the research. Um, and we're looking at some artifacts here that are in our museum at historic Jamestown and the majority of these are arms and armor related. Through the process that you've just watched we have conserved thousands of artifacts here at historic Jamestown many of which are on display in our archaeological museum. Please come see us. Thanks.